the first ever spacewalk, or EVA, extravehicular activity, was accomplished by Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov on March 18, 1965, during the flight of Voskhod 2. Utilizing an inflatable airlock to exit the spacecraft, Leonov made his way into open space at the end of a 50-foot tether. The pressure within his spacesuit increased while he carried out Earth observation and photography assignments, and when he brought the spacewalk to a close, he struggled to re-enter the airlock. Thinking quickly, Leonov released some of the pressure from his suit, even though he knew that doing so could result in potentially crippling decompression sickness. Fortunately, he was able to make his way back into the Voskhod spacecraft without harm. U.S. astronaut Edward White achieved the first EVA of the American space program when he ventured outside the Gemini 4 spacecraft on June 3, 1965. White's spacewalking experience initially proved more pleasant than the ordeal that Leonov had endured, thanks mainly to a modified spacesuit and an ingenious oxygen gun known as the handheld maneuvering unit. Emitting short bursts of oxygen from the maneuvering device to control his movements, White was able to carry out his assigned Earth observation and photography assignments while enjoying a pleasant sensation of weightlessness. At the end of the period allotted for his spacewalk, he ruefully described the conclusion of the EVA as the saddest moment of my life. As positive as his experience was outside the vehicle, however, White's return to the interior of the Gemini capsule provided several long moments of unexpected drama. It required great effort for him to climb back onto his seat within the spacecraft, and ultimately took him nearly half as long to re-enter the capsule as the entire time he had spent outside. American astronauts continued to struggle with spacewalking exercises for much of the Gemini program. During Gemini 9, astronaut Eugene Cernan found it difficult to maintain his vision during EVA when the faceplate on his helmet fogged over. Gemini 10 spacewalker Michael Collins had trouble maintaining his movements during his EVA and found it difficult to climb back into the Gemini capsule when the tether connecting him to the vehicle became tangled. Gemini 11 astronaut Richard Gordon found that the task of attaching a tether between the Gemini spacecraft and an unmanned target vehicle required far more effort than it had in simulations prior to the flight. It wasn't until Gemini 12 that the science of spacewalking took a turn for the better. In preparation for his three EVAs on that mission, Buzz Aldrin and the NASA teams working on smoothing the way for future spacewalks implemented a host of innovations in the spacecraft and in the astronauts' tools and training. Aldrin practiced each phase of his EVA chores in a pool, gauging his movements in the water against the conditions he knew, thanks to White, Cernan, Collins, and Gordon that he would face in the weightlessness of space. Aldrin was also fitted with a special tool belt designed to keep his EVA tools organized and easy to reach. And the Gemini 12 spacecraft was fitted with a greatly expanded array of railings, rings, and hooks for him to hold onto as he made his way around the outside of the vehicle. While the U.S. approach to EVA grew over the course of the Gemini program, the Soviet Union made no follow-up to Leonov's historic 1965 spacewalk until January of 1969, during Soyuz 5. Just six months later, the very term EVA would take on a whole new dimension during Apollo 11, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin would make the first extravehicular activity on solid ground as the first human beings to walk on the surface of the moon.